Hi everyone, this is Matt Armstrong from The Pen Habit, and in today's video I'm going to review this pen. This is the Twisby VAC 700. This is one of the very first commercially available pens I ever bought. So if you've watched a lot of my previous videos, you know that the first few pens I bought were custom-made, hand-turned wood or cast alabaster pens. Um, this is the first commercially available pen I ever purchased. So this is a vacuum filler pen, and so the filling mechanism on this one's a little bit different uh, than a lot of other pens. So for instance, uh, on this one, you would pull it back, dip the nib into the ink, push the plunger down, and once the plunger passes a certain point, then it creates a vacuum in here and fills up the reservoir with ink. And I'll show you how that works in just a little bit. Obviously, this is a clear pen, and for those of you new to the fountain pen world, a clear pen is, is often called a demonstrator pen because you can actually see how the internal mechanism works. So let's talk a little bit about this pen. This is, as I mentioned, the Twisby VAC 700. It's a, it's a pretty hefty pen, so we'll do the hold it up to my hand test, and I really should be measuring these before I start. In fact, I happen to have a ruler here. So uh, for those of you into the metric system, this is about 14 and a half centimeters long or if we're doing the uh, the other system, we're looking at just over five and three quarters. So what is that? Five and six eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, five and seven eighths, something like that. Um, it's a decent weight pen, but because it is acrylic, it's not too heavy. I have on this pen, I got it with both, well, I, I have a long story with this pen. So, I bought the VAC 700 with a medium nib, and the the initial medium nib did not work very well. Uh, it was very dry. It would skip. I had a lot of problems with it. The uh, So I used one of Stephen Brown's videos online about how to adjust your pen to make it write more wet. Unfortunately, I didn't really go slowly like he recommends, and in so doing, managed to absolutely destroy the nib. So I went and bought a new replacement nib, but rather than buy a replacement nib from Twisby, I bought a replacement nib from the Edison Pen Company. Now both Twisby and the Edison Pen Company use the same company in Germany to make their nibs, Jovo, J-O-W-O. And uh, I replaced, I basically just pulled out the, the Twisby nib that came with it and put in a fine Edison nib. And that's the, the nib that's on here right now. I'll switch it out before we do the writing sample. Uh, I later on went back and purchased a new medium nib. I also purchased a 1.1 millimeter stub and a 1.9 millimeter stub nib. And those nibs have worked just fine. So the medium, the new medium and the two new stubs, I've not had any problems with those with skipping or writing too dry. Uh, in general though, and one thing I will add is when you buy a replacement nib for the Twisby, and this is probably my favorite part of the pen, you want to replace a nib, you pull this whole, you pull the whole section off, and the new nib unit is a complete section with a new feed and a new nib. So all you do is screw it back on, and you're good to go. It works really well, and I've been able to sw swap out nibs in the middle of a writing test or something like that when I wanted to get a different sense of what the ink would look like in with a, a medium nib versus a stub versus a fine point. So that's probably the thing I like the most. As I mentioned, it's a vac fill. The one thing you'll notice, and I don't know if you can see it here, if not, I'll try to show you in a close up, but there is a little rubber stopper at the end of the plunger. And on this pen, once you screw the end down, the stopper is in place in such a way that it will prevent additional ink from flowing into the feed. So if you're if you're going to do a lot of writing, you'll want to unscrew the end of the pen just a little bit to allow ink to flow. And then when you're ready to travel, just put it back up. Now, I've heard a lot of people say this is great if you fly. It really is kind of an annoyance for me, but there is a way to take care of that. You can actually remove the little rubber stopper from the end of the plunger, and it should work just fine. You can take the pen apart. Uh, the Twisby pens come with a wrench, and mine's actually 
I greased up mine so it works with just my fingers. But you can actually pull the entire pen apart just by unscrewing that little piece and then you get the entire plunger out. This makes it really easy to clean, which for a demonstrator pen is good. Uh, if you've not worked with demonstrator pens before, you may discover that you get ink in places you didn't realize ink could get on a pen. And in so doing, will make it very difficult to clean. So having the ability to, to completely disassemble this pen is actually really quite nice. It has a, feels like plastic, but it looks like it's covered in chrome. Uh, center band says Twisby, and then VAX 700 Taiwan on the bottom. Has the standard Twisby red logo on the top, pretty standard. The pen in general, the center barrel is smooth. The top barrel is faceted, as is the blind cap at the back here. And uh, in general, I like this pen quite a bit. It's it's one of my regular writers. I Even with all the problems I've had with the nibs, once I got past that first nib that I really borked up pretty badly, this is, works well. I don't post with it. I don't write with it posted, rather, because it fits quite nicely in my hand without having to post it. Although you can post it. I don't ever feel the need. I find it to be a little bit heavy in the back. Now, I generally tend to like slightly larger pens, and this pen would certainly qualify as a larger pen, especially when it is capped. So I don't know if you can see this, but it fits pretty well in this pocket, but I have some, some dress pockets where the clip will barely fit over the edge of the pocket just because the pen is so long. So it's not a huge deal, but it's something to keep in mind if you don't like larger pens or if you're looking for a larger pen. The VAC 700 is a pretty good sized pen. So in general, I like this pen quite a bit. I haven't had too many problems with it. it seems to work fairly well for me. So let's go ahead, do a writing sample. I'll show you a couple different nibs and I'll show you how to fill it. All right, so here we are with the Twisby VAC 700 and I apologize for the ink that's already in the chamber here. I, uh, this is not the first time I have recorded this video. I keep, first time I forgot to hit record on the camcorder, the second time I forgot to hit record on the microphone. So I checked, we are in fact recording both the camcorder and the microphone, so I think we're good. So this is the Twisby VAC 700. Here's the cap, and I'll just kind of walk you through the features up close here. So we've got the clip, which has this really interesting powdered finish that I actually really like quite a bit. There is the standard red logo at the top. Center band says Twisby, and then VAC 700 Taiwan. Um, I wanted to mention to you, here is, you can see it. Let me unscrew this all the way. Right there is the little stopper that will prevent the ink flowing through the feed when the cap is closed all the way and screwed tight. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that feature. It doesn't bother me a whole lot, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I just haven't gone to the effort of removing that little rubber stopper. So uh, if you're going to write a lot, as I mentioned earlier, make sure that you open up the cap and let that uh, let the ink flow. So let me go ahead and show you how this is filled. It's pretty simple. So I'll pull up this ink here. And what you do is you pull the plunger all the way back Stick it in the ink. I'll try to tilt this here so you can see a little bit better. Push the plunger down and it will fill up the pen. Now this pen does hold a fair bit of ink actually. It's, um, I've, I've measured it once. I don't remember what it is right off the top of my head, but if I'm remembering correctly, it's somewhere between two and two and a half milliliters of ink that you can fill this with if you get it full all the way. Now, there are ways, there are tricks to getting a, a full fill on this. Brian Goulet does a pretty good video about how this is done, so I'm not going to repeat it here. You can just look for it under his channel, Ink Nouveau. But I will say that I hear a lot of people talking about wanting to get as much ink into their pen as possible. And as a fairly new fountain pen user, this has never been an issue for me. I don't really care about getting my pen completely full of ink for a couple of reasons. First of all, I like the way it looks with the ink sloshing back and forth in my demonstrator. But also, I want to switch inks a lot. I've got 40, no, actually, as of today, 54 bottles of ink sitting in my house. And I like to change ink a lot. So rather than fill it up and, and write with it for three weeks. I'll generally fill it up enough to last me one week. And then at the end of the week, if there's anything left, I end up washing it down the sink. So filling a pen with way too much ink, that just doesn't really, doesn't really do it for me. 
Anyway, let's do a bit of writing here. So, this is the Twisby VAX 700. And we are using a Yovo built medium nib in steel. The ink is Private Reserve. Chocolat. You can spell. There we go. And uh, the paper is Rhodia 80 gram. And I had someone ask me the other day what that GSM stands for. And uh, if you've not heard this before, a little extra information. What that means is if the paper is, if you had a one meter by one meter square of the paper, that square would weigh 80 grams. So the higher this number is, the heavier and the thicker the paper generally will be. Uh, Claire Fontaine paper generally runs about 90 grams. I have seen 100 gram paper. I generally work on either dot pads or Claire Fontaine, which are 80 or 90. So just, just a little extra information there for you. All right, so let's do a bit of writing. Little quote there from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory in honor of our chocolate brown ink. So, with the pen full and this uh, new medium nib from Twisby, it, this pen works quite nicely. Don't really have any problems with it. So, it's a little bit, you know, as a number six nib, it's going to be a little bit larger in size. You'll get a tiny little bit of line variation, but it's you're not going to see much. Um, you know, you can see very light to heavy. I think the variation comes just because this is a longer nib than, let's say, a number five nib, and so you will get a, a tiny little bit of flex, but for all intents and purposes, this is going to be a pretty uh, stiff rider. There's just not a lot of give to it. Um, not a lot of variation between the downstroke and the cross strokes, but it... Uh, it does shade pretty well. This ink does shade pretty well in this pen. Now, one thing I will say is that this medium, for a medium, is actually, I find it to be a little bit closer to a fine than a medium. Even though the nib was made in Germany, this pen is made in Taiwan, and generally, the general rule of thumb is Asian pens tend to write a little bit finer than their European equivalents, European or American equivalents. So even though this is a medium, it does tend to run a little on the fine side, especially if you don't put much weight on it. It uh, it provides a pretty fine line. You can do some upside down writing. It's not as scratchy as some of the other upside down writing that I've done, but uh, you know, if you need to get a little bit of a uh, very fine line, you can always do that. And in terms of wetness, this pen, it's not very, at least not with this nib. You know, you get a little bit, but it's just not super wet here. I could, and this is kind of what got me in trouble. So I've talked about this before, but there is a way to make a pen write more wetly, which you you hold your finger right there and push down and cause, and it causes the, um, the tines to just separate a little tiny bit. It will widen the line, but it will also cause you to lay down more ink on the paper. That's how I managed to completely bork up the original nib that I got from Twisby is because I pushed too hard and deformed the nib and I couldn't bend it back without just totally ruining it. It got so bad that I actually, every time I would remove the stopper from the pen, the back of the pen, the feed within a matter of 10 to 15 seconds would just completely saturate with, all the fins here would saturate with ink, and before long, it would actually start dripping out onto the paper. So I'd have to unstopper the back, let the fins fill up with ink, stopper it again, write, and when it started to run dry, open it up again. It was, it was a pain, which is why I replaced the nib. 
Um, now that I've done that, it writes fine, but it is still on the dry side. This is not going to be a juicy pen by any stretch of the imagination. So in general, the medium, it works just fine. I don't have really any problems with it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to swap out the nibs. So as I mentioned, it's super easy. You just unscrew one. Set that aside, and I'm going to go ahead and put on one of the stub nibs. Now, earlier in the video, I accidentally said, oh, and spill a little bit of ink on myself here. Um, I accidentally said that I had gotten a 1.9 millimeter stub. That is incorrect. It was actually a 1.5 millimeter stub. I don't even know if Twisby makes a 1.9. So, in any case, here is writing with the 1.5. And a bit of a writing sample now. A line from, quite frankly, the creepiest moment in children's movies ever. The brilliant Gene Wilder running through the, the boat through the tunnel in Willy Wonka. Man, that was a creepy moment. Love it, though. He's such, so brilliant. One of my favorite movies. All right. So in terms of wetness, the stubs generally tend to write a lot more wet than do the... Uh, the, the medium, but even still, this is not a gusher. No one's going to mistake this pen for being a gusher. Uh, it you'll get a little bit of shading, but because it's not putting down a ton of ink, it's not. It's just not. Uh, you know, it's it's a really good pen for lower quality papers for something you need to dry quickly. If you're a lefty, this pen with a fast drying ink on on some lower quality paper, this would probably be a really good combination for you because you're not going to be dragging your hand through what you write. And I'm not a lefty, so I'm not even going to try to demonstrate that. But in any case, the um, the the stubs are interesting. I'm, I'm still not totally sold on writing with stubs. I use them every now and again, um, but I do miss some of the, uh, the smoothness that you get from a, a well-ground you know, round nib point. In general, though, this is a good pen. I love the ability to change out the nibs. That's probably my favorite aspect. And I really do like the, uh, it's got a, a really large ink reservoir, interesting and unique filling feature. It's not unique, but an interesting filling feature. And, uh, and it's a good everyday writer pen. This is a pen that I don't mind, you know, someone wants to look at my fountain pen. This is a pen I don't mind them playing around with because the nibs are fairly cheap to replace. The pen itself is $80, I think. It comes with a nib. And the nib units themselves are $20 to $25 a piece. So you can get essentially seven different pens for $200. It's, uh, it is really quite, a, quite an interesting value. So anyway, this is my review of the Twisby VAC 700. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit.